All right, this is part two of our reproduction video series. And in the last video, we talked about the differences and similarities and the importance um, and also the evolutionary differences and in, 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 um, advantages and disadvantages of sexual versus asexual reproduction. Uh, on this video, I want to talk about the different kinds of sexual and asexual reproduction that you can find around our beautiful biosphere. And there are some very fancy ways to reproduce. In here, here, for example, you see uh, the animal way, the plant way, uh, a simple animal way with the planaria just going by fragmenting. And you also see the binary fission happening at the earliest simple type of life, which is the bacteria. Now, so let's talk about different kinds of asexual and sexual reproduction. So, <clears throat> um, asexual reproduction... The most simple and ancient type of reproduction is most definitely just simple binary fission. And we already did a lecture about this, but basically it's when cells split up, you know, they copy the DNA, cleave in half, and that's it. That's as simple as it gets. And because it's so simple, it's most likely the first original type of, of cell reproduction. And bacteria will be the ones which will do true binary fission. Um, although it looks like a lot of the unicellular life does binary fission, they're actually doing mitosis followed by cytokinesis. Remember, anything that's a protozoa or um, algae or a, or a mold that's unicellular, these eukaryotic types of cells will have to undergo mitosis or the separation of the nucleus prior to the actual cell separation. All right? But, so mitosis in itself it can also be considered a part of sexual reproduction, even though I don't have it in the screen. But we already talked about that in the pre previous lectures. So what, let's talk about something new. Uh, so here you have a different kind of almost the same thing as like a mitosis or binary fission, but it's slightly different. What we have here is something called budding. All right? Now budding is basically when the nucleus undergoes a mitotic division and the cell grows really large. And then a little piece of it will break apart and it will all go on to become... Um, a bigger uh, another organism so it's kind of like you do mitosis but instead of, of uh, separating the cell in half the cell stays intact and keeps doing what it's doing the advantage of budding is that you don't have to stop the cellular activity to do mitosis instead this a new cell just kind of pops out of the cell even as the cell is still active and usually it leaves a mark behind too it's called bud scars but some fungus and other kinds of unicellular organisms uh, also reproduce through this process called budding. Another way of, um, of uh, a sexual reproduction is called spore formation. By the way, in budding, uh, the copy of the, it's like mitosis, so the, the new nucleus will be exactly the same thing as the old nucleus, and eventually those tiny little buds will grow to become one of the big cells as well. So. Now, another way is spore formation. Now, in spore formation, it's basically when something like a bacteria or a fungus um, duplicates its DNA and stores that into an actual uh, protective layer and, or a spore coat. And then the spore coat will transform and the actual cell will self-destruct and only the spore will then go on uh, as a life form. But what that allows the cell to do is kind of stay dormant until favorable uh, conditions are come back. So basically when um, bacteria, or fungus, and other things find themselves in, in favorable conditions, they basically turn themselves into spores, wait for favorable conditions, and then they come back active. That's why those packets of activated dry yeast, that's why they work, because the yeast is still alive in there, it's just as a spore. And as soon as it hits the water and it hits favorable conditions, it will start to activate from spore back to the vegetative cell, which is what actually performs the uh, normal metabolic activities of the cell. Another interesting way of doing um, um, asexual reproduction is a super mitosis, is what I call it. It's uh, called schizogony. And basically, it's schizo because schizo means to split. And so basically, think of it as instead of doing one mitosis, you do like 20 at the same time. And basically, instead of doing mitosis just once and separating the cell in half, you do a series of mitotic divisions in which you create like several nuclei inside the cell and each nuclei is going to be basically fill the cell and at that point the cell is called a schizont and then eventually each one of these nucleuses will break into pieces of cytoplasm and create smaller versions 
uh, by several cytokinesis, and these are called merozoites, and they will grow to become a normal adults. So I call this super mitosis, or the process of doing multiple mitosis all at once. See, all of these processes do not require uh, interchange of DNA. All of them are basically about copying uh, or making m copies of yourself. So all of these processes are basically asexual. So another one is rege regeneration or fragmentation. Now, um, in animals, it's very rare to have true fragmentation, but fragmentation happens a lot in algae or fungus or even some um, um, plants. And it's basically when uh, you cut a piece of the organism in half, and then each half will go on to become a full organism. Fungus can definitely uh, easily um, reproduce through fragmentation. So if you if you cut a hefai, which is a, most of the fungus, in half and put the half somewhere else, it will go on to become a full fungus. Now, <coughs> regeneration is almost uh, true reproduction, and that's when... Um, you cut something and then you regenerate each uh, in, an, an animal out of each half. Now, things like um, geckos can regenerate limbs, but not completely regenerate the body. All right, but something like planaria, which is a simpler kind of animal, can actually duplicate itself from scratch and create two new planarias if you actually uh, break them in half. So this is really cool. Like the picture I had in the beginning of the lecture, if you were to cut the planaria in half like this. All right, and leave the bottom halves attached. Each half will grow into a two-headed animal, kind of like. So it's pretty interesting. And then another way also of doing asexual production is parthenogenesis. Now, parthenogenesis is basically when um, instead of doing fertilization, which you see here in the top, where you, you basically make an egg, and the egg is a haploid cell. We talked about this with the mitosis. And then the haploid cell of the egg combines with the sperm to return to a diploid, which then undergoes mitosis to an adult, right? So that's how a normal shark will be happening. But in parthenogenesis or in virgin birth, the mother creates a haploid cell, and then that haploid DNA undergoes so, a, a kind of like an S phase and then duplicates itself, and then... Basically, you get parthenogenesis. Uh, by duplicating half of you, you make a whole new of you. So it's almost like instead of getting the half that's missing from the sperm, the half that's missing come, uh, is uh, produced by a mini S phase inside the, hap inside the gamete. And some animals like sharks um, and um, lizards can be doing this as well. All right? So in the next slide here, you see an example of parthenogenesis versus cloning versus fertilization. So for normal fertilization, the sperm meets the egg, which then fertilizes the egg and restores a diploid number, makes a zygote that splits by mitosis and actually makes the adult. And in cloning, which is a human way of screwing these things up, we actually remove the nucleus of, of the DNA. So you remove the, the DNA from the egg and you use chemicals to induce the somatic the cell to fuse with uh, a somatic cell of your choice. And then this, that somatic cell of your choice inserts the DNA inside of the, of the egg, and the egg will grow as a clone of the somatic cell that you included. So another way of kind of, not really reproducing it, but it's like an artificial uh, asexual reproduction. And then you have the... Uh, natural reproduction of kind of like cloning but basically it's not really cloning because it's basically off a of half a cell so when you make parthenogenesis you don't make a copy of yourself you make a copy of half of yourself so uh, the, the the offspring is going to be half like the parent uh, of that you know and that's basically three different methods of that now in plants parthenogenesis happens a lot and in fact, plants have a, a way of reproducing that's called vegetative pro pro propagation, in which one shoot will start from a ramification of a, of a root. So as roots grow, they grow into these, these secondary roots that spread out into these runners. And as the, the plant kind of stretches on the ground, it is possible for that to grow into a sapling, a new shoot to start off that. And so it creates a system of plants which are connected to each other. 
in, through these w roots, you know. So it's very common in things like strawberry, uh, grass, and that's why you end up with these polyploy plants because they are merging together in and growing as a system instead of growing as a single unit. And basically, plants have the ability to fragment. You know, you can cut a piece of the plant and transplant that piece somewhere else and it will all grow. So plants have a much easier uh, method of replication than animals do because they actually can fragment in ways that animals cannot. So it just goes back to the, the kind of somatic cell that plants have versus the kind of somatic cell animals have. Plant cells can de-differentiate very easily while uh, animal cells cannot. So plant cells have the ability to do vegetative propagation, either naturally or by transplantation, okay? So that's why when you plant trees, you usually don't plant um, a seedling. You actually plant a, a piece of the tree, a sapling, you know, in, in the ground. So it's very interesting. Now, the um, another thing that plants do, it has to do with parthenogenesis that we just talked about, is apomixis or nuclear embryogeny. Now, both those methods is basically what it is, is the formation of a seed without necessarily fertilizing the, the plant. So, you know, you have the flower or, or a variation of a flower which is not open. And there are several different ways of this, and I'm not going to get into detail on it. But basically, what happens is that instead of the flower uh, forming and attaching itself to pollen, and inside the flower you have the, the ovum, and then the pollen attaches to itself and you make a, a seed, what happens inside instead is that these alternative processes cause parthenogenesis within the flower and the, the plant makes the seed without the help of any external resources. So, and um, there are several different versions of this, but basically what it is, is a, a plant making seeds without necessarily needing another plant or even perhaps without even self-fertilizing, which, which is not exactly what this is. This is. Uh, Self-fertilization is when a plant basically fertilizes itself. This is basically, without first fertilization, you can still do this, all right? Now, nucellar embryon embryoni is, is when you have one seed, and those seeds um, make several seeds out of one embryo. So, for example, a citrix plant reproduced like that, you, you, it can actually make, you have this one seed produced during the actual sexual reproduction process, but instead of making one embryo, you make many which is an example of polyembryony, which is, for example, when you have twins, right? Twins are basically an example of a split of the, of the, uh, of the early gametes. So, and that is what basically what causes uh, twins is when that gamete splits. So, for example, so you, you made a gamete, and then that gamete will go undergo mitosis and form, and then keep undergoing mitosis and form bigger and bigger cells, you know? And this will keep going until it becomes you. But if one of these cells were to separate from that mass of cells that's growing, say for example, you end up with three and two and one, so accidentally they got dis, dis, detached, this can go on to be an, a, a, an embryo and this could be, go on to become another embryo. So these, all of these cells, before they differentiate, have the potential to become all the cells in your body. They're called stem cells. So by separating the embryo into tiny pieces, you can actually have multiple embryos growing from the same original zygote. And this even happens in animals. This is why you get how you get twins or identical twins. And in plants, this will happen inside the, the, the flower even after the seed is semi-developed. So the seed can undergo a process where it copies the whole seed even after some of the cells are already differentiated. And that's what nucellar, nucellar embryonity is. When a seed is already differentiated, so it's way past this point of the early cells, the way it ha happens with animals, but an already differentiated seed will basically copy itself and then multiple seeds will form out of one. So that's a lot of different ways, as you can be discussed, for asexual reproduction. On our next, next video, we will talk about different ways of sexual reproduction. And we're also going to talk about how sex evolved, you know, what's the origin of sexual behavior and why does it exist? You know, why does meiosis, fertilization, mate selection, and all those behaviors are all now part of our biosphere. All right, so we'll see you then. Let's talk about sex on the next video.